Hey guys, Goksum for the win here, and welcome back to another Leaf Green walkthrough episode on my channel. Today, in this video, we'll be going through Route 12 and 13. Now, this is the route you could have taken other than the uh, bike path to get to uh, the uh, city known as Fuchsia City, but I decided to take the bike path first just because it was an easier route. I kind of like the bike path because it's faster, and this route right here, these two routes, these are the longest routes I would say in the game, are one of the longest. They're very uh, tedious and annoying because there's a lot of traders on there. And on top of that, there's a, there's a bunch of things you can find which is really cool as well. There's one item in particular you would want to get from this route though, or these two routes, which is the Super Rod, because you can get a bunch of brand new Pokemon with it. Well, not brand new, but like really good Pokemon. For example, you could get a uh, Gyarados, which would be a great addition to your team if you want a good water type. Now, I probably shouldn't use Giga Drain on this Bellsprow, because we all know, Grass ain't effective against this thing, but he's going to use Stun Spore on us. I didn't know that was effective against another grass type okay so we're gonna go ahead and switch out then because our light bulb right here cannot take out this bell sprout for sure god damn i need to find like some good training routes for my uh light bulb that super rod will come in handy for that but i, I don't really like training the water for uh levels just because i hate fishing over and over again because in the older gens i'm pretty sure mostly the older gens you uh couldn't get bites that often which kind of sucked but whatever we're gonna take this bell sprout here with an ice punch and we're gonna get a few exp points let's go let's go jackie chan jackie chan is actually the lowest pokemon on my team uh lowest level but he's one of the better ones actually he's gonna be eating up the elite four once we've made it there mostly lorelei's team like lorelei's team's not even gonna get a chance against jackie chan with this brick break but we're going to get an Oddish right here using, I think that was Sludge on us. Let's just keep using these Ice Punches. I love these uh, animations that we have in this game. Um, but anyways, on this route, you can find a lot of cool Pokemon. Specifically, um, when we get to uh, the other routes, you can find some uh, Dittos, which is really good, actually. Dittos can be really good to use on your team. Uh, it's depending on how you use it though. If you want to use it against Elite Four, that's it, very option. It's a very good option because uh, against Lance mostly, if you get a high level, level Ditto, like you end up to level 70 or something. I don't know why you would train a Ditto up there, but then you could use Transform and uh, transform it into his Dragonite and then like sweep his team or something like that because. Uh, if you have Ditto on your team, it's very gimmicky. It's very dependent on what your style is and stuff. But anyways, we're going to be taking out this Tangela right here. And Jackie Chan, gain a few more EXP points. Let's go. Did she say she's impatient? Well, I'm sorry that I had to take a long time to win. You had a few Pokemon on your team. Right here, I think this is a bird trainer, actually. Now, I actually, since this, this route is so long, I don't know half of the Pokemon on this route. Um, on the top of my head. So hopefully I can remember some of them, but like at the end of the day, it's going to be difficult. I think this guy has a Pidgeotto and a Pidgey. I, I can't really remember though. Um, yeah, light bulb's not going to be doing anything. It looks like Jackie Chan. I don't know if I want to switch into Jackie Chan because he can't die from a gust. Well, two gusts, I would say. I think he could live one gust from level 26. Oh, he's going to use Whirlwind. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. Let's go ahead and use this Ice Punch. Quick attack. Not going to do that much damage. And get Jackie Chan up to level 36. Um, I'm hoping Jackie Chan can get up to level like 50 or something before the Elite Four because if not, I need that speed on this Pokemon. Um, the one, number one thing you'll need in the Elite Four is speed, of course, because if you don't want to speed some of these Pokemon in the Elite Four, they are going to uh, just sweep you easily. Now, I don't know why I'm talking about the Elite Four when we're only on Route 12 and 13, but you know, you might as well get ready for the big battles when we make it there, you know? Um, we still got a long way to go. There's a few more things in this walkthrough that we got to complete. Um, Leaf Green Fire Red are way more difficult games, I would say, than uh, Red and Blue, just because they have more added things. And on top of that, um, the Pokemon is just harder altogether, I would say. Uh, mostly with the different RNGs and stuff. Like, you can get pretty bad RNG in Gen 1, but at the same time, you can get really good RNG because it could work in your favor. With, like, for example, freezing. I'm pretty sure you can't unthaw unless you get hit by a fire type move, which is crazy. Um, the move wrap and stuff is freaking broken in that game. And just all together with like hacks and missing and stuff, sometimes it's just amazing. I love Gen 1 for that reason because it's like one of the really unique Pokemon games. Uh, Red and Blue, of course, not Fire Red, Leaf Green, because they did change a lot of the mechanics since then. Anyways, we are sweeping through this bird trainer with this ice punch right here. Jackie Chan, I'm telling you guys, it's going to be the star of the team right here. We got the punching king right here himself. 
We got 534 EXP points and defeated Bird Edward. Bird Keeper Edward? I think his name was Edward. I don't know for sure. I'm not going to check though. Okay, we're going to switch out right here because Light Bulb is not going to be able to do anything against these Pokemon. Um, we're going to go ahead and switch into our um, Jackie Chan right here. I'm kind of deciding what should we should do for uh, our other Pokemon that need some levels. I'd like to get them all up to level 40 before the next gym. Uh, and I'm pretty sure we'll be able to do that on these routes because there are a lot of Pokemon to be fighting. Like a lot, a lot of Pokemon to be fighting. Um, you would probably get around like five levels each on each Pokemon throughout these routes. Mostly from the wild battles with the Super Rod and on top of that, the battles with the Pokemon trainers. Anyways, let's go ahead and use Rock Tube. I don't know how many Ice Punches we should waste because I don't want to really heal up throughout these routes because they are so long. So I'd rather not run back and forth. Um, I'm probably going to do actually both of these routes in this video just because, um, honestly, I, I want to get these overs with, mostly, because it's not really, I probably couldn't have, didn't need to make a video on this, but, like, at the same time, these are really great routes to go through, I'm telling you guys, because the Super Rod and the levels you get from these routes are amazing, so I do recommend going through these, but if you don't want to, it's not necessary whatsoever. Uh, I remember a couple of years ago, actually, I don't know if I've talked about these in my earlier videos, but I made a Leaf Green walkthrough on a different channel, and that was when I was first starting off YouTube. I completely forgot about this route, like, I didn't even think it existed. And then I finished the walkthrough, I was like, oh crap, I totally skipped half of the game here. And it was honestly a learning experience, because from now then, on and then, since then, um, I've learned about this route and I completely forgot, I was like, how do you forget amazing route with Super Rod and all these trainers? Because you get so much EXP. And there's also a cool item you can get, um, leftovers from uh, a Snorlax at the end of these two routes here. Um, but you do need something called an item finder, and I'm pretty sure you need to catch a decent amount of Pokemon through your Pokedex. Um, and then go up to a scientist in one of the little buildings that separate routes and then you'll get from him but that's mostly with any item um, you can get the amulet coin you can get a couple of things like they're really good items I think we actually got the amulet coin I can't remember if we did or didn't uh, I haven't checked in a while but anyways let's go ahead and use rock tomb once again gloom yes we got a critical hit okay I was actually praying for that because I was like okay gloom's gonna live this and then we're just gonna take more poison damage and uh, honestly I think Nah, we're gonna stay in with Jackie Chan. I think I could one-shot these guys with an Ice Punch if I really want to. Um, I've just been using Rock Tomb to kind of save my PP for other battles, but since we only have four PP in both, I might as well just use Ice Punch right now and uh, get as much levels as I can on Jackie Chan at the moment. And actually, we might die from this acid right here since Jackie Chan was poisoned. Hopefully, we could live it. Come on, Jackie. And no, Jackie Chan's gonna fall. I probably should have healed, but... Whatever, let's go ahead and switch into Chaotic right here. Get him with that dig and make sure, uh... Actually, you know what? I'm gonna use Rock Slide. I don't wanna waste a turn. I'm pretty sure this will kill anyways. Just cause Sand Slash has a huge attack stat. We're pretty high level on top of that. It's an Oddish. Oddish just can't take attacks for crap. But we're gonna go up to level 39 here. Chaotic, let's go. And Picnicker's gonna send out a Oddish next. Okay, another one. Let's go ahead and use Dig this time because I wanna get this over with. Now, I actually can't remember actually if uh, Oddish is a uh, poison type or grass type in its first evolution. We'll see right here if it's super effective or not, but hopefully. And it took him out anyways, but it looks like he is not a poison type. Okay, I thought so. But at the back of my head, I was like, hmm, this thing can definitely be a poison type. I don't know why they didn't, but at the same time, I could see. If he was poison type in Little Cup, I'm pretty sure that would make him a lot better, honestly. If you guys don't know what Little Cup is, Little Cup is a tier in competitive battling where you use the first evolution of Pokemon to battle, and you're only allowed them. Now, there's a couple of broken things in Little Cup, that's for sure, and they banned them. Or things that could have been Little Cup, but they banned it before it made it in. And let's use Dragon Rage, actually. We got Roshi out, I didn't switch out, I didn't think about it, but you know, we might as well use our Dragon Rage, get that base 40 attack on this Bulbasaur. Man, I remember when our Pokemon was a Bulbasaur, and did the light bulb suck? I'm pretty sure he was good at the beginning of the game, but I don't know. If you guys know what a uh, emulator called, well not an emulator, a ROM, that is called Ash Gray, um, it's an amazing ROM, but if you try the no evolution thing, 
like how Ash actually didn't evolve any of his Pokemon, like his Bulbasaur, his Squirtle and stuff, and Pikachu. It is one hard rum, that's for sure, because Bulbasaur has a horrible defense stat compared to other Pokemon that are fully evolved and stuff, and it can't take hits, and it can't outspeed anything, and it can't attack anything for shit either. But, you know what, we're gonna take out that Bulbasaur right there with our Dragon Rage, and I'm gonna switch out Roshi, actually, because I want Roshi to get some levels. Um, let's go ahead and heal up Light Bulb real quick. Okay, it is time to train up our light bulb. I just healed him up real quick, and actually, you guys will get mad at me if I tell you this. I used a full restore just to heal his pair, pair hacks, but you know, I gotta get that uh, heal on the paralyzed because he's already slow enough as he is, and I might as well uh, get some levels up on him instead of running back to the Pokemon Center. Even though I'm pretty sure the Pokemon Center is pretty close to us right now, but you know what? Why not? Why not? We'll can, we can buy more full restores later on. Uh, let's go ahead and leech seed this Pidgey Oto right here and uh, get some health back while we're at it if he attacks us. But uh, yeah, don't ever try this with uh, Grass Up against Pidgey Oto. I don't know why I'm doing this. Not because it's going to be hard or anything, but like it's so inefficient. You could just use your Electric type and sweep through these uh, bird Pokemon. But you know why not? Why not? We'll get some levels up on our light bulb right here with these flying types, which is kind of stupid. But again, might as well do it. And I'm surprised that Pidgeotto stayed asleep for two turns. Usually, when I do this, he usually wakes up the next turn, which is kind of funny. Okay, Giga Drain's going to take out Pidgeotto right here. And hopefully, in the next few battles, my light bulb will be level 40. Because I really don't like using my light bulb, just because it, unless he has, like, either a super effective move against the Pokemon, or, like, for example, I'm versing a normal type right here. Giga Drain's just not really doing much to uh, flying types and like fire types and stuff. Of course, because it isn't very effective, but at the same time, look, we didn't even take a Wigglytuff and we're way higher. And also, Giga Drain doesn't have that much PP on it as well, which is also a drawback, but uh, it's the strongest move we got. Vine Whip, I don't think, would be doing as much as Giga Drain right here, but Wigglytuff is gonna go down and Beauty Grace is gonna be defeated. Let's go. I honestly thought about getting a Wigglytuff on my team at one point because I did use him in red and blue. I don't know how he would be in fire red leaf green, but you know, Wigglytuff is a pretty good special attacker. Um, it got way better in gen 6, of course, when we got that fairy typing, but like it was still a good one as a normal type. If we got like, I don't even know if Hyper Voice is a move in this game, actually thinking about it now, but if it is, God, this thing would be pretty good on an in-game team, I would say. Mostly if you can get a choice specs or something. I don't know where you would get choice specs, because honestly, I don't know where you would get one in this game. But, like, if you were able to, that thing would be one strong attacker for sure. Now, coughing, can you just die, please? If you poison me somehow, even though I'm a grass type, I'm going to be so mad. And if light bulb, if you miss this vine whip, you're going back into your ball. Good job, you took out the coughing. I hate coughings when I'm using my light bulb because it's just let's do zero damage, dude. It does zero damage. Let's go ahead and actually switch on to SSJ Coco here. Mine as well because uh, light bulb's not doing anything to these poison types with Vine Whip. And SSJ Coco right here is going to take him out quite easily with its uh, Shockwave. I do got to get late or Thunderbolt on this thing sooner or later because Shockwave's not going to cut it in the leap for I don't think. I got to get them one shots everywhere. He's going to use Screech right here, lower our defense harshly, and uh, he's going to die from a shockwave. That's fine with me. Now, this route right here, this isn't like the first route. There's a lot more to go. Like, I'm telling you guys, there's a lot of trainers. I'll probably skip some of them when we get later on, but for now, if you guys are like following me along in this walkthrough or something and likes doing everything I do, uh, I'll show you guys some battles, but like at the same time, they get very repetitive because there's a lot of trainers so I don't think I'll show all of them but you guys could do what you guys want to do with the levels on the trainers I don't show. I do know how fun it can be though when you're following a YouTuber or someone who's playing a walkthrough. Uh, it is super fun following what they're doing because you kind of feel like you're playing the game with them at the same time um, because you're doing exactly what they're doing of course. But at the same time some YouTubers don't really think about that and uh, you kind of like get a little mad when they don't show every single battle. I used to do this when I was little. I used to follow YouTubers and do exactly what they did because 
I couldn't beat some of the games I played, like Leaf Green and Fire Red, I couldn't beat Leaf Green for the longest time when I was little, it was crazy. This game was super hard for some reason, I don't know why. I started off with Heart Gold and Soul Solo, which I'm pretty sure is way harder than Leaf Green and Fire Red. Maybe not the Leap 4 the first time, but the second time, the second Leap 4, that is a hard run to go through. Um, recently I actually went through it, which is kind of funny, and I beat it with level 40s, which is pretty amazing actually. I I was pretty surprised. I also beat Trainer Red with level 30s and 40s. I was like, oh my god, how would I do this? But I got the major hacks. I stole them out with potions and stuff, which was kind of funny. Killed them with um, the hail that goes on in that battle in Leaf or in Heart Gold Soul Silver. Anyways, SSJ Goku is sweeping through these Pokemon right here. Problem is we got poison, so might have to go actually heal up back to the Pokemon Center, which kind of sucks. I didn't want to do that, but you know, I might as well do it just so my Pokemon are back at full health and they can get them levels that they need. Um, SSJ Koko is going to go up to level 38 soon, which is great. Don't have to train much longer. I think once the Pokemon's at level 40 for the next gym, I'll just stop training them for the rest. And I do recommend doing that because, like, you might as because you will get more levels after uh, Blaine, which is the next gym leader. Um, but you don't need level 40s or higher if you have 6 Pokemon on your team. But if you do want to train your water type Pokemon up to a higher level, go for it. It makes the gym 10 times easier of course, but I always like a challenge. I always like capping my Pokemon at a certain level just so it isn't too easy, but also too, isn't too hard at all. Now SSJ Coco is going to go up to level 38 and coughing's going to come out. And hopefully we can live a few more poisons here. I don't know for sure though, ah, uh, we got 10 EXP points, Shockwave, please take him out, I don't think I'm going to one-shot, but maybe I can get that crit. Hey, okay, he's going to one-shot, that's great. I think it's because we went up a level, but SSJ Koku right here is not going to die from poison just yet. I actually think if we stayed in right here, yes, he's going to die from poison. God damn it, Koku, why did you have to do that? Why did you have to die on me, man? Let's go ahead and switch out though, um... Chaotic is almost level 40, let's m might as well get him up there. Um, he's got a few more battles to go, that's for sure though. Um, let's go ahead and dig. Go down into the ground and then attack him with that strong ground type against his poison and take him out in one shot. I honestly don't know why all these trainers have poison types and... Poison types and flying types, that's all the Pokemon they have on these teams. And Light Bulb can't do anything against them, which kind of sucks. But Biker... Urs? I don't know how to pronounce that name. That's a weird name, guys. I've never seen that before. But anyways, I'm going to go heal up, and I'll see you guys in a bit.